I am going to pray for you guys today and I'm going to um, see, we're going to see some healing miracles and I'm believing that we will see some miracles that are actually immediate and then there will be some miracles that are not as immediate that will come little by little. Good morning, Esther, Tracy, Brendy, Anna Rose. I apologize that I am late. We hit our alarm clock. Me and my husband stayed up late because we had, um, well, I actually taught um, the School of Supernatural last night and we had people from out of town, which we often do because, um, well, I don't know, we have people come in from out of town to that. And so it kind of turned into a prophetic prayer room experience. We were prophesying and praying over them, so we stayed late. But to God be the glory, we had a wonderful time, and he moved, and just so many signs, wonders, and miracles happening right now. If you have not caught this wave, today is a great day to do it, because that number 222 and the prophetic word that I released starting on um, February the 22nd. And then uh, Lana Wowser just released it, released a word, which I actually posted on my wall. Go and read it. She is legit. She is the real deal prophetic voice in this generation. And um, she also released a word and it was interesting. It was similar, much more um, expounding and specific about for women. But it was similar to how God is um, bringing many people up in the body of Christ to walk in healing miracles. And so we are seeing healing miracles in our healing room. We are believing for even greater miracles and um, just verifiable healings from cancer and um, backs healed. And, you know, I don't think we've, we've even scratched the surface. So I'm excited to pray for you guys and to pray for your physical healing. And with that, emotional healing and soul wound healing. Because I truly, truly believe that we can get our bodies healed. And if we don't get our souls healed, and this is why I believe sometimes healing happens as a process and gr God's great love for us. He allows us to walk out the healing. I think we get that healing touch and immediately we're healed. But sometimes just like immediately we're saved and we have to work out our salvation. Sometimes immediately we're healed and we have to work out our healing. And oftentimes God gives strategy. Um, he'll do He'll do miracles where we have enough of a of a miraculous immediate touch relief from pain just uh, the faith will drop in you that you know that you have been healed and so this is going to be prayers for healing but it's also going to be a little bit of teaching in here so that if you receive a healing this morning you don't lose your healing because you don't understand some of these principles that I've learned about miracles you know, you guys, if you listen to me yesterday, yesterday, I was talking about how God gave me a strategy for my healing. He told me to fast for seven days. And if you look in the Bible, Jesus didn't always do miracles the same. And he didn't always do miracles immediately. Many, many, many times. I am healed miraculously because I've had that cough before and it hung on for months and months. And the seven day fast knocked it out. Now, I still have a tiny little, you know, I might have a little bit of cough here and there, but I'm not sick. I'm not sick anymore. <clears throat> and, um, oh, God is so good. So we don't want to miss our miracle by not following his instructions. So I'm thinking about, it was, um, in the Old Testament. Oh my goodness. The man's name is slipping my mind, which I know his name. Um, well, there was a there was a gentleman. He was not a Jew, and he was a man of high position. And he came to Elisha for healing from leprosy because he heard that there was a prophet in Israel. So he went to get his healing, and Elijah said, "Go wash in the Jordan seven times." And this man was offended. He was like, 
do we not have water, you know, clean water where we're in the country that he was from? He said that he thought that Jordan was nasty water. And he's like, I'm not doing this. I thought you'd come out here and wave your hand over me and I would be healed. And so he was going on his way and his servant, who actually was a Jew, said to him, you know, what if he had told you to do something really hard? You would have done it. Like, just do it. you know. And so he did. He went and washed seven times and he was healed of his leprosy. And this goes not just for physical healing, but other things. So many times we miss our miracle because we don't obey God. This is uh, financial miracles, relational miracles. You might be married and the Lord has told you to stop back talking. Your husband, stop arguing. It doesn't matter. Let him think he's right. I say, let him think he's right. But, um, you know, let, let it go. Don't, don't get into strife. You can fix your relationships this way. Sometimes all is needed to fix a relationship is just to measure your words a little better. Good morning, Debbie, Atticus, Catherine, Jessica. Yes, yes, yes. I'm praying Dana, Nancy, Brenda, you guys put your, um, Abigail Rose. I am Anna Rose. Hey, Anna, Nancy, you guys put your prayer request in the, um, in the comments. Oh, Jesus, we are going to see some miracles this morning. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God. We're going to do whatever you tell us to do. We are going to listen to you and we are going to receive our healing. We are going to receive um, deliverance from long, deeply rooted physical infirmities this morning. The beginning the, the healing touch that we need, Lord, we're trusting you. We know, God, that you are God that heals. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I am trusting you with all of my heart that you will work in this day, that you will release he healing in such a way that, um, Jesus, Jesus, sorry, I'm going to do this real long. Jesus, Jesus. We need you, God. We need you, God. We need you, God. We need you. We need a healing touch from you. Lord, you said to present our request unto the Lord and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep our hearts and minds in Christ. Some people need a miracle in a court case. Some people need a miracle in their physical body. Some people need a miracle in their finances. Lord, we're not limiting the miracles that you are going to birth this morning. Lord, we do not expect miracles enough. And therefore, they're not happening in our lives like they should. And God, you want to glorify yourself. We are supernatural people. And we have supernatural purposes. And you have created us in your image, Lord. And you have told us that your spirit living in us and through us will be enabling us to do even greater works than Jesus did. And God, we don't believe that that just stopped. That We don't believe that that just stopped, God. We stopped asking. We stopped believing. We stopped standing. We stopped obeying. Lord, it's not from our end. We just acknowledge that. We acknowledge, Lord, that any lack or any deficit or Anything that's not budging and changing in our lives is not due to your hand, God, because you are a God that blesses. You are all good. You are all loving. And you guys think about it. Don't let the devil tell you God doesn't want to heal you. <clears throat> now, I'm not saying God won't work in your life and grow you through, you know, the sickness or the thing that you're suffering physically, but we've got to believe that God is not only willing, but he is able. Not only able, but he's willing. Both ways. He's able and he's willing. He's able and he's willing. Everybody who came to Jesus in faith got healed. He turned nobody away that came to him in faith. Now, there, there are situations in the scripture, like the man by the pool of Bethesda, who... Um, you know, it only was recorded. There was all kinds of sick, pe sick people around that pool. And, and only one was healed that day that was recorded. So we don't know all the ins and outs of it. But we know that, you know, even the lady with the issue of blood, she went 
and pressed in and received her healing. She trusted that if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she would be healed. And so I believe sometimes, you know, God sends a prophet, apostle, and, you know, even an evangelist or pastor, a teacher, somebody who has healing gifts and a healing anointing to pray physical healing over us. And it is not that we couldn't get the physical healing without it, but it's a point of faith activation. It's a point of faith activation. You know, when people go to healing rooms and, and healing conferences and receive their healing, I don't think that it is the the minister that's just got some kind of a... Um, well, I mean, oftentimes it is. They have a healing anointing and there's a certain, there is a certain level of when you've pressed in with the Lord and when I mean, you're walking in great faith and you do have uh, the healing gifts that God gives through you, there is that. But I do think that it can be, a person can be a point of faith activation. And those can be really powerful for us, things in the natural that we can hold on to. You know, Moses had his rod, wasn't a magic stick, but it was a point of faith activation and God put it in his hand. And so let this morning be a point of faith activation for you. Okay, say, I have dealt with this issue. We've got somebody who said they were born with cerebral palsy. Um, Anna, I'm only seeing that you said you need healing from something. We, we need hearts healed. We need hearts healed. We need um, bodies healed. We need strategy. I'm going to pray and ask the Lord right now in the name of Jesus to begin to release heavenly strategy. And we are going to pray against root causes, not just the symptoms. We're going to pray and root out these root, root causes. Um, Isaiah 53, 5 says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Uh, Psalm 68, 19b says he daily loads us with benefits psalm 103 1 through 3 as god did for us in deliverance from sin he has also done from for us in physical healing listen listen to this if you take scriptures and you put your name in them and you put your disease in the line you know by his stripes we are healed from uh, several palsy by his stripes i am healed from a head cold you you speak the scriptures and you speak it personally you speak it personally to yourself and it, that word of god is living and active and it's sharper than two-edged sword it can cut Away those things that are not of him and from him. We just pray, God, that you cut away the disease. We pray, God, that the um, the cells that have been in our bodies that are not from you. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, 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 that every cell that is not originally designed to be in our body. Every virus, every bacteria, every disease, every infirmity, every part of our body that isn't functioning to optimal perfection, God, we pray in the name of Jesus, healing, healing. So Psalm 103, 1 through 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. God doesn't just heal some. He heals all. God does not just forgive some. He forgives all. You know, I think sometimes when it comes to faith for healing, we can have faith to get healing from a cold 
but not cancer. You know, we can have faith to get healing from something that just came on us, but not something that we were born with. What if we were like that about sin? And maybe some people are. Well, we can have faith to get forgiven for a white lie. But, you know, if we've messed up and, you know, fell into adultery, then we can't receive forgiveness for that. The same principle applies. The blood of Jesus paid it all. It covered all. It brings restoration and new life in every situation. There is no sin that's too great. And there is no sickness or illness that is too hard for God to heal. It's no different for him to heal us from a cold than it is for cancer. How is that any different to the God of the universe? It's not. It's, it's our faith. Because we receive our healing by faith. And so another reason that sometimes healing happens incrementally is because we are building our faith. You know, God has said yes to our healing. We believe it a little bit and we, we, we walk it out and we can see some improvement and then we have to fight against the doubt and unbelief if there's a reoccurring thing. I've had this happen in praying for, for somebody with um, brain cancer. Okay, <clears throat> so we're praying right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that everybody who is born again and filled with the Spirit doesn't just believe in the miracle of salvation and healing in their hearts, but in their mind and their soul with their whole being that believe the truth of God's word. Um, I'm, I'm not sure where it's located, but there's a verse that says that the word of God is like a healing balm. So if you are pressing in for healing, get the word and feed on it get the word and feed on it tiana i'm praying for your sister-in-law we're praying we're praying we're believing we're standing i just bless you guys that that you will wake up wide awake be refreshed in your spirit be fully alive today that there is beauty in you that there is beauty surrounding you, that you breathe in the presence of God, and you are fully convinced in your heart and your mind of his total and complete healing and restoration and deliverance, you know, because some, and, and actually some healings are demons. Some sicknesses are demonic um, entities that, you know, you know, I've seen demons and they take on, they look like what they do, like a spirit of gluttony is fat, um, you know, and so some demons are sent out and attach themselves and cause diseases, infirmities in, bo in bodies. That's not always the case. So some people need deliverance. Some people need the deliverance of God to... Um, get delivered from these demonic spirits. And all you have to do, you don't need a deliverance minister. You don't need um, 10 Christians. You just need to know and understand your position in Christ. And say, and, and you have to submit yourself to the Lord. Because we can't just resist the devil. We have to submit ourselves to the Lord. And so if there is demonic activity that does not seem to be um you're not seeming to be able to take authority by just saying leave and pleading the blood and and anoint in the house it's so important that you begin to look at your life and say where am i not submitted to god because no um demons can attack but when we submit ourselves to god and resist the devil the bible says he will flee so this is truth. If if we submit and resist, he flees. If we just resist, he doesn't flee. If we just submit and we don't, you know, resist, he doesn't flee. We have to submit ourselves to God and resist the devil and he will flee. And and just speak the blood of Jesus over your body, the blood of Jesus over your house. 
take communion every day for your physical healing, especially if you are sick. Get Go get some grape juice today. Get some um, pita bread. Put that bread and that juice aside. And I think this is important. You know, we are set apart people and communion should be set apart. Like if we get grape juice, I mean, not that we haven't just taken our regular grape juice and drank it, but it's good to have that set apart only for communion. Don't let your kids drink it. You know, this is the communion grape juice and set it apart. This is the communion um, pita bread or crackers. But in a pinch, it does, it's not imperative. I just think that it's it's nice to set things apart that are sacred for sacred use. And our, um, Hold on just a second here. Okay. Take that communion. Say, by his stripes, I am healed. 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 God, your faithfulness endures for all generation. You sent your word and you healed us and you delivered us from our instructions. Lord God, you said, and in, in, in your word, so shall your word go forth from your mouth and it will not return to you void. But it will accomplish what you please and it shall prosper in the thing for which you sent it. Lord, so we pray the word of God. We speak your word out of our mouth and we claim these scriptures over our lives. God. On the cross you cried out. Jesus cried out. It is finished. It is finished. He is alert and he's active. And he's watching over his word to perform it. He's hovering over you right now by his spirit and touching your body right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, this morning we're going to put your word into action. We are deciding a thing. This is in Job uh, 22, 27 and 28. The Bible says you shall decide and decree a thing and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. What are we deciding this morning? What are we deciding this morning? Healing in our bodies, healing in our emotions, healing in our souls, deliverance, prosperity in our soul, prosperity in our finances, prosperity in our relationships. Yes, prosperity. The Lord has said an abundant life is ours. He died and was given everything under his feet and we are co-heirs with him we're not walking into the fullness of that in this life but we are walking in portions of it and we stand in authority in the word of god and we decree and declare healing in the name of jesus okay i'm fixing to really begin to pray over healing this morning and if the lord leads i'm gonna um Give words of knowledge. As the word leads. <clears throat> As the Lord leads. I said the word, but it's the word of God. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come to you. And according to your word in 1414, if we ask anything in your name, you shall do it for us. We're not just willy-nilly praying here. We're praying the word of God. Lord, we confess we haven't always listened to that still small voice. We haven't always obeyed the word. We haven't always done the things we needed to do. We haven't always followed through with our commitments. We haven't always been 100% honest with ourselves about where we are. Lord God, we have left some things undone. We've done some things we shouldn't have done. We've gotten out of balance in some ways. We confess our sins to you. Lord, and trust, according to 1 John 1, 9, that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all wrongdoing. Sin does open the door for sickness. So we confess our sins. We confess our parents' sins. God, we confess the generational sins all the way back to Adam and Eve. Lord, we confess. And stand in the gap and plead the blood of Jesus over the sins of our ancestors, God. Forgive them. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know you. 
they didn't know you, they didn't understand, forgive them for Christ's sake. We just plead the blood of Jesus over our ancestors' sins, over our sins. In the name of Jesus, we receive your forgiveness. Listen, when you're asking for forgiveness, don't just throw up an apology. Take a moment to sit in his presence and just receive forgiveness. Take a minute to soak in that blood of Jesus. Soak in his presence. Soak in his power. Soak in his Holy Spirit. Soak in his love. And let that wash over you and cleanse out not just the sin, but the shame and the residual effects that it has caused on your identity. Because when we as believers sin, it begins to erode our identity in Christ and our own thinking and thought processes in the deep places of our soul. And when we have our identity eroded, it causes more sin. It causes more imbalances in our body and diseases. <clears throat> God, we just ask that you forgive all of our iniquities and even our trespasses. You know, iniquities are those sins that we don't even realize that we've done. And not blatant rebellion. You know, we all have iniquity, even if we're not walking in rebellion. We all have iniquities that we need forgiveness from. And put whatever specific sins, pray in the name of Jesus. Repent. We repent. Forgive us. Cover them in the blood. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness according to your word. God, heal us. Heal people of cancer this morning. Breast cancer colon cancer, skin cancer, touch and heal bodies of arthritis, touch and heal bodies of several palsy, <clears throat> these colds and the flu and just the, the sniffles and the coughs. Heal the bodies of people, Lord, and give them wisdom in their diet and in taking supplements and in getting rest. Give them wisdom to enable their bodies to fight naturally. You know, many times God will only do the part we can't do. And in some cases, we, you know, like with diabetes, a lot of diabetes is caused by really poor diets. Not all diabetes. You know, you have a tendency towards something. But we need to clean up our diets. We need to be mindful to eat, to feed our body healthy, just like we uh, feed our spirit, the food of the Word of God. We need to be in the Word. We need to be feasting on the Word. We need to be meditating on the Word. We need to be speaking the Word. Lord, according to your Word, you are the Lord of our lives. And sickness and disease have no power over us. We have been forgiven. We are free from all sin and shame. We are dead to sin and alive to righteousness. You've given us abundant life. And God, we just receive the life that you've given us through your word. And that abundant life, we command everything to bow to the life of Jesus within us. And Lord, may that your word and, and the life that is in it flow into every organ of our bodies. Bring life, bring healing, bring health. Um, I think uh, John, in John 6, Jesus bore our sickness and carried our pain. Jesus, you bore our sickness. We cast our sickness on you. We cast our infirmity on you. We cast our lack on you. We, we receive healing. We receive abundant life. You guys tag some people. Some people need to hear this this morning. There's people that are struggling that, that know the Lord that don't know that he wants to heal them. That don't really understand that he wants to heal them supernaturally. Supernaturally. Natural healing in the name of Jesus. Do we believe that his word is true? Do we really believe it? Do we really believe it? Miracles, signs and wonders. Miracles, signs and wonders released in your life. I want you to see God speaking in new and miraculous ways to you. I pray right now that your spiritual eyes be open. 
that your spiritual ears be open, that you would fix your mind and your heart on Jesus and things above, not on these earthly things, because you've died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. Now, a hidden life in Christ, with Christ in God, what does this mean? It means that God is all around us. We are in God. He is in us. We should be having great experiences in communion with God that will blast out our doubt and unbelief, that will blast out our misconceptions and sicknesses in Christ, the abundant life that he died for us to have. Lord God, reveal yourself, reveal your magnificent angels that you have sent out right now into the homes of people, healing angels, a healing touch from God right now in Jesus' name. I'm praying and believing the anointing that God is, is pouring out over my life, that anybody who touches in, in, in this ministry, specifically and certainly my partners, that there would be a transference of that anointing. I mean, just being under certain ministries, when you attach yourself and sit under certain ministries, you get part of that anointing to flow down on your life. When you listen to them pray, when you listen to them teach, and certainly when you sow into the ministries. <clears throat> I've specifically sat under, listened to, and sewn into healing ministries for a while now. And I am reaping the benefits of that. And you can do the same thing. We give no place to our sickness. We give no place to our sickness and pain. We don't ponder it. We don't pay attention to it. We reject it as not from God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, you sent your word and healed us and delivered us from all of our destructions. In Psalm 107, that is a verse. <laughs> he sent his word and healed us. He sent his word and healed us. The word of God says you were healed. That is truth. Receive it. Believe it. Ponder it. Fight against anything that tries to tell you differently, including the pain in your own body. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> My son called me and I clicked it off and paused it. So he's in China. Y'all pray for him. Okay. Heavenly Father God, we, we just attend to your word. We incline our ears to your sayings. We do not let them depart from our eyes. We keep them in the midst of our hearts because they're life and healing to all of our flesh. Write this verse down, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. If you are battling healing from Crohn's disease, healing in Jesus' name, write these healing verses down. Read them. Put them on the mirror. Believe them. Chew on them. Use them as food. Eat, 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 eat the word of God and be healed. Jesus, our eyes are not dim. Our natural vigor is not diminished. If you were an older person and you were losing your thoughts, if you were losing your memory, stand against that stuff. Those are things that this world expects to happen when you're old. But Jesus, um, it's, in, it's in the word of God that he was with Moses. And Moses was strong and vigorous till the end. Lord, we bless our eyes because we see. We bless our ears because they hear. You bless them. You bless them. Psalm 91, you guys know this one. No evil will befall us, nor any plague come near our dwelling. For you have given your angels charge over us, and they keep us in all our ways. In our pathway is life, healing, and health. In the name of Jesus, according to the word of God, which is true, and the realities of our lives that are not in line with the truth of God must bend right now in Jesus' name. Right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, 
you took our infirmities, you bore our sickness, and we refuse to allow sickness to dominate our bodies. We speak and declare the life of God is flowing through us, flowing through every organ, every cell, every muscle, every ligament. In the name of Jesus, every fiber of our being is pulsating with the life of God. We are the temple of the living God. We are the temple of the living God. Anything that has crumbled, anything that is in disorder, be set in place. Be ordered in the name of Jesus by the word of God. By the word of God in the name of Jesus. Healed, 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 healed in Jesus' name. We have been redeemed for the curse. We are blessed. Blessed when we go in, blessed when we go out. We are blessed, 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 happy, prosperous, highly favored, blessed, prosperous, happy, highly favored. Doors open before we even get to them. We don't have to beg and plead for open doors. We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't even have to have a door open. Because the door lives in us. We just walk with him. We can walk through walls. <laughs> Nothing is impossible for him who believes. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. The life of God is flowing in our bloodstream. It's flowing to every cell of our bodies. It's restoring life and health and vitality in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, your life is a reality in our flesh, and it's restoring every cell of our bodies right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, our body, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we make demands on our own bodies to release the right hormones for those of you who are struggling with hormonal imbalances and the right balance, the right chemicals, our bodies, our hormones are in perfect chemical balance. I just speak to pancreas uh, um, in the name of Jesus. Secrete the proper amount of insulin for life and health in Jesus' name. Um, pancreas, come into perfect order in the name of Jesus. Now, soul, body, will, emotions, get under the Lord. Eat the right foods. Maintain your healing. You've been healed in the name of Jesus from your pancreas not producing the right chemicals and hormones. Insulin. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Through the word of God, he has imparted life to us. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. By the life of God in us, our bodies are restored. Every breath we breathe and every word we speak and everything we do, it's all for the glory of God. It's all for the glory of God. Glorify yourself in our lives, Lord. Everything in your body, everything in your soul, everything in your natural life that has not been planted by God, I speak and declare by the authority of the Holy Spirit living within me, by the, by the authority of the courts of heaven and that have given me this authority by the power of God because of the position of Christ that I stand in, everything that is not planted by God, must be dissolved and rooted out of your body right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. It is so. In Jesus' name, be cursed at the root. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray the life of God be engrafted into every fiber of our beings. You guys, we are alive with the life of God. There is no growth. There is no tumor. There is no muscle malfunction, bone misalignment. None of these things have a right in our bodies. We belong to Jesus. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. These are things of the past. We've been delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and out of the authority 
of the kingdom of darkness. And sickness and disease are not from God. Infirmities in our body are not from God. Satan, you are a liar. You are a liar. We are not underneath. We are above and not underneath. Every organ, every tissue must function in the perfection that God created it to function in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We forbid our bodies from malfunctioning in Jesus' name, in our emotions, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we just give voice to the word of God. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. That's Romans 8. We've been set free from the law of sin and death. The law of the life of Jesus sets us free from the law of sin and death in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> the spirit of God right now in Jesus name is energizing every cell in your body. It's being regenerated and energized right now in Jesus name. I pray deliverance right now in the name of Jesus from chronic fatigue. Many of you have chronic fatigue. Many of you have chronic fatigue and many of you have chronic fatigue because of um, some, some things that are needed to revitalize your, your physical body tissues. Some of you guys need to get more sleep. Some of you guys need to read the word more. Some of you guys need to take some supplements, B12, God give you scrolls, God give you wisdom. Don't poo poo the wisdom of God. <laughs> don't, don't think that if God's saying you have chronic fatigue, this has come on you over time through a series of stresses on your body and your emotions. He wants to lead you into deliverance where you are revitalized and full of energy. And you're going to get a burst of it this morning. But you must follow the strategies of heaven to completely walk out of that chronic fatigue. And God has healed you this day. Walk in wisdom. Walk in obedience and and walk in that fullness of healing and life and little by little within a few weeks even you're going to come completely out of that chronic fatigue and be revitalized. I see people going and getting gym memberships beginning to walk. Sometimes you got to pick up your mat and walk. You've been laying down for a long time. You haven't had the energy to exercise by faith. Even this day, go walk outside. It's nice. It's nice here. Begin to take steps of faith and obedience and the Spirit of God will meet you at your level of faith and empower you and you are going to come out of that. You got things to do. You got kids that need you energized. <clears throat> that sickness has to flee. That disease has to leave. I just command every bacteria, virus, fungi in the name of Jesus of Nazareth to die. In the name of Jesus. If you have a tumor, you just speak to the tumor. You can't exist in me. The Spirit of God is upon me. The Spirit of God is on us. Sickness and fear and oppression have no power over us. When the Word of God is your confession, that sickness, that disease, that fear has no power over you. It is powerless to harm you. It is powerless. It is a lie. It is deception. Don't believe it. Don't believe the negative doctor report. Don't believe your symptoms. Do you guys believe me? That the word of God is true? That healing is real? In the name of Jesus, we have strong hearts. Our hearts are strong. We live a long life. Long life is ours. I renounce, break, decree, and declare every family curse off of your life where people died early from heart disease, from cancer, um, from all different kinds of diseases. And just... Those of you who have families where there's a short lifespan, where people have been taken up before their time, obesity, that's not you. That's not your future. I declare strong and lean bodies over you in the name of Jesus. Obesity is a, it's a, um, it needs healing in the soul and in the body. God wants to heal your body. That excess weight weighs you down. That excess, that excess weight it's a, it can cause a spirit of heaviness to come in. 
and um, the Lord wants to deliver you. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, and I'm not kooky where I'm like, you know, God's just going to deliver you from all of your weight, but I, I pray supernatural weight loss, supernatural weight loss. I pray the power to fast. Many of you guys that have obesity must fast on a regular basis to get free from that and to lose that weight. And if you say it makes me sick, I can't do it. You, you do juice fasting. You can do it. You can do it. You can juice fast. You get those fresh juices flowing. You, you will be so energized. Your body will let go of that weight so fast on those fasts. I go, I've done it. I've, I have been through it. And, and then it will help you control your eating when you're not fasting and be more balanced. Take my fasting course. It's on my new website. It had been free. It's not free anymore. It's $25. Um, but it's worth it. I've got new videos on there. I've got a book, um, ebook. Um, I, we've got a support group on Facebook. <clears throat> if you have problems with joints or your bones misaligned, we call them aligned. We call them healed in Jesus' name. We call them normal in the name of Jesus. Our bones and our joints and our ligaments and our organs will not respond, react, or receive any sickness, disease, or infirmity in the name of Jesus. The spirit of life permeates our bones and joints with life and health. Right, you make demands. Right, make demands on the on the word of God. Make demands on the word of God. He put it there. He wants us to. Get in that word and find out what your promises are and say, look, look at this, God. Look at this. Here's your promise. I'm believing it. Make it the re reality of my life. I will lend and not borrow. I pray that the marrow in our body produces blood that is pure and that will just ward off sickness and diseases. We nothing in our body receives the curse, no pain, no swelling. And we just command our joints to refuse to allow anything that will hurt or destroy their normal function in the name of Jesus. We demand, we command, we declare all of these things in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We just speak the word of faith over our bodies. Every internal organ perform is just perfect, perfect order. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we just make commands on our body and charge our body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the authority of his holy word to be healed and made whole in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We resist everything that comes against our bodies, everything that comes against our health. We resist weakness. We reject the curse. We enforce life in our bodies by our word, by our confession. Live, our bodies will live and not die. Our bodies are healed. We've been redeemed from the curse. We've been redeemed from destruction. You guys pray over your food. It's not just a ritual. Before you eat, pray. Pray and ask the Lord to bless the food to nourish your bodies. We pray that over our food. We say we bless this food to nourish our bodies and we use our bodies for your service. In the name of Jesus, before we eat. <clears throat> divine healing. Divine the manifestations of divine healing and divine health come upon you this day in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You're not a respecter of persons, God. What you've done for one person of faith, you'll do for another. Anything that tries, anything from the enemy that tries to steal our healing, we forbid it in Jesus' name. We bind up the enemy in the name of Jesus. We don't listen to your lies. We're taking every thought captive. You guys have gotten healing today. Take every thought captive. War with the word. Stand on the word. Reject the symptoms that try to come back. Stand in faith for total healing. Don't stop standing. Having done all to stand. Having decreed. Having declared. Having prayed. Having believed. Stand 
firm in your liberty with Christ has made you free. And do not be ensnared again in a yoke of bondage that believes the lies of your symptoms. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Let me see what time it is here. You know, I feel like I really want to, for this week, focus on just prayers. Just praying this morning, in the mornings. I'll probably come back to teaching some. Well, whatever the Lord leaves from morning to morning. But um, I actually had a dream last night. And um, I really, really want to pray over you guys. I pray over you guys all the time. But I really want to pray over you guys with you guys. Where you're hear hearing me pray. <clears throat> because this era of signs and wonders and miracles it's for all of us it is for all of us and anything that's hindering you from walking in that great measure of faith and that great level of intimacy I just want to be used by the Lord in any way that I can to help you shift out of that once and for all and and to walk in the light as he's in the light and just to walk in that freedom because there's work for us to do and God wants us to raise up disciples that will go forth in the miracle work and power of the Lord and expand his kingdom. God has such good things for each and every one of you. Such a great plan. Such a wonderful plan to bless you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. And I have just a burning desire for each and every one of us to fulfill the call of God on our lives so that we can see his kingdom come. <laughs> it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And just have the return of our of a king of kings coming through the clouds and just let's just wrap this thing up you know life is great we're so glad that he's given us life he's given us all these abundant life these beautiful things on earth to admire and to enjoy but this is nothing compared to the new earth and the new heaven and all that we have to look forward to so i just want us all to do whatever we can to, you know, to, you know, the Lord tarries because he doesn't want anybody to perish. He, he wants us to get as many people into the kingdom as we can and, and to, to be a light and to lead people in. And he's going to just provide so many opportunities. So many opportunities are being set up for us. The harvest is plentiful. The harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. So we, I just pray the Lord to send out workers into the harvest. I pray each and every one of you be used by God to be a blessing today. Be used by God to meet somebody's needs today. That, that every single one of you have angelic encounters today. Manifestations of healing today. Absolute assurance through signs and wonders and confirmations of your healing, confirmations of your deliverance, confirmations of what God's spoken to your heart about what lies ahead, and confirmations that God is calling you to greater things. And for those of you who don't have specific understanding of what you're being called to, I pray God release that to you. Because the Bible says my people perish, you know, for, for a lack of a vision. So, let me see, how, how does that scripture go? I just know we need vision. <laughs> we need vision. We need to see what God has. That's what the conference in um, North Charleston is about. You know, just increasing in that seer anointing where you can see in the spirit realm what God's doing. Because, you know, the, the scripture says, blessed are those who believe when they haven't seen. And that's talking about in the natural before you've seen the manifestations. But this is talking about seeing in the spirit, seeing ahead of time. Seeing ahead of time, it's, you know, Jesus for the joy that was laid before him, he endured the cross, even though despising its shame. And then he sat down at the right hand of God. He went through what he went through because he saw the outcome of his obedience. And if you see what God has for you, if you get a glimpse of the wonders and the the just amazing life that God has wants to release over you and the, the amazing things he wants to do through you when you get a glimpse of that when you see it 
It enables you to lay down the lower life. It enables you to break out of the chains. It enables, it just it is empowering. And I know many of you guys already know this. And it will just empower you to do the hard thing to, you know, to press in, to, to press on and just to fight. And um, so I just pray all that over you guys today. I love you. I apologize. I was got on. We we were up late. For those of you who just topped on, I, I think I said this in the beginning. But I love you guys, and I plan to be on this week, um, praying with you guys. Um, I might not come on Friday. My husband works from home that day, so I might spend that morning in bed with him. If we just have a hard time finding time to get together, and um. We've still got some seats left for the um, the Modern Day Mezuzah Conference, 27th, 28th, 29th here in Herndon, Virginia. If you're coming to that, go to moderndaymezuzah.com. If you need, it's the tickets are 25. Email me if you need. Um, I have some comp tickets because it's being held at the Ecclesia for, for you know, um, so it's at the ecclesia that I am the head of. So I have some comp tickets. If you need help with that, if you, if you can't afford the ticket, let me know and I'll get a free ticket to you. And, um, residents in, they have apartments, get some people together and come. They have two bedroom apartments for like 110, maybe $120 through orbits. And it is worth driving. It is worth getting some people together and coming. You need, we we're going to have, some healing miracles going on there and just so so much impartation from some really powerful anointed people are going to be happening that weekend so get get there if you can i appreciate you guys the lord leads you to sow into this ministry sow into this ministry sow into this ministry for your own good obey god about that it's not just for advancing the kingdom, although it does advance the kingdom when you sow. It also is a lot of people miss their be blessing when they don't follow the prompting of the Lord to sow or to partner. There's power in partnership, and I need partners. I'm praying for partners. So as you are praying for the Lord to move in your life to connect you with the right people, oftentimes they'll say, partner here, do this. And when you don't do it, you're blocking your own progress obedience is the key to moving forward don't do it under compulsion god loves a cheerful giver i'm not saying d just obey god if that is something that he is laying on your heart to do <clears throat> okay i love you guys we'll see you in the morning share this and tag some people i think that it'll bless others as well i appreciate that's also one way that you can help um, help the ministry expand you might not feel led to give you know, but just hit the share button, send this to a couple people who need it, share it on your wall. And that helps also to get, um, to expand the kingdom of God as well. God bless.